Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Adobe Live. Thank you all so much for joining. My name is Cody, and I will be your host for the next hour. Here on Illustrating Stories, if you've never catched catched caught this stream before um basically what we do is we actually take some of my old artwork use it as inspiration and re-illustrate use those characters in that artwork and re-illustrate um some couplet text that is written by my husband so i kind of like walk you through um, my process on how i would illustrate text if i were to be uh doing illustrations for a book or anything like that um, so yeah, thank you all so much for joining. Hey, Val, uh, Luciano, welcome, Emily, Joshua. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Thank you so much for popping in. Um, I'm going to pop on over to Photoshop and we can just go ahead and get on in it. Um, so the artwork that we are using today is actually um, an illustration that I did back in um, 2020. Um, and this this is actually still honestly one of my favorite paintings I've ever done. I love the atmosphere and the lighting and everything. Um, and the characters are some of my favorites too. Um, one of my viewers, uh, I actually did this on live on my Behance. Um, the, the video on demand is actually probably still up there if you guys ever wanted to watch the process of it. But one of my viewers at the time actually named this illustration Cats Having Chats. Um, so that's what it's been called ever since then. I never named my artwork, but this is like the only painting that has a name. Um, and I just loved it. So it always stuck around, but, um, we are going to be using these characters to illustrate them moving forward in their little date that they're on. Um, and so the text that we're going to be working with is cats finish chats and head out into the city for a walk in the park on an evening so pretty. So we are going to be taking these characters and putting them into a little city park scene. Um, maybe like walking um, like down a uh, like a little walkway, like with a, with maybe like benches and trees and stuff. Like, I don't know, we'll come up with a composition um, as we go. But I wanted to, what I like to do on this show is kind of like break down the text um, for you guys and kind of just go through the my thought process when I look at text to kind of like help you imagine like what's going on in my head, like the gears are turning while I'm like reading the text and kind of imagining what a scene might be. So this is what I'm thinking. So let me grab my big old red marker. Here's a, here's a big old red marker. So our text says cats finish chats. So obviously they're going to be moving from this scene to our next scene. Um, so our characters are our cats. So we need to have to, our both of our little cats in the illustration. So they're going to be moving forward and they head out into the city. So we want to make sure that we have in our illustration some indications of a city. Maybe we have like buildings off in the skyline or something like maybe in the background um uh whereas like the foreground has like the trees and stuff and the background's got like the the city lights and stuff like that um and then for a walk so they're going to be walking in the park um that's pretty easy so we have like our we have our little we have our little kitties walking in the park so that's what they're going to be doing <laughs> And then it's it's evening. So this is actually the first time on the show that we've specified a time of day. So we want to make sure that we um, indicate that in the illustration, like you wouldn't want to have like a bright, sunny, um, a bright, sunny sky in this illustration because it specifies it in the text. So you want to make sure that you're paying attention to things like that. And of course, the evening is very pretty. Of course, our scenery is going to be beautiful. So um, let's go ahead and I'm going to make our our little reference image a little bit smaller here so we have um, some room to work. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I love cats and chats. Yes, everyone loves cats and chats. Oh, also, I wanted to um, mention that this illustration, I actually plan on making this into a um an ambience video like an animated ambience video if you guys haven't checked out my youtube channel i recently made a frame by frame ambient um like fall ambient video um i plan on actually making this illustration into an ambience video too i'm gonna just like extend the sides to make it 16 by 9 
Um, and to like, I'm going to like put in some more of the cafe. Like I'm going to put in like a cafe bar over here and stuff like that. Um, and then I'm going to animate the characters as well. I just haven't gotten around to it, but it's like, it's on my to-do list and I really want to get it done. But, um, since we were working with this illustration, I wanted to mention that. Um, okay. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and make a new layer. And I am going to grab my favorite, um, sketching brush is called happy hb and that's by kyle webster from his mega pack and i kind of use like a charcoal gray color so i'm actually going to also hold shift and then drag my pen up and down and left and right to make our um we're going to be doing a bit of a thumbnail here first i know it's going to be kind of small for you guys i'm going to zoom in a little bit um, but I like to, when I'm doing full scenes like this, I kind of end up doing a thumbnail first. It just kind of helps, um, doing something really small helps like get the, um, the sizing and perspective down easier than, um, like drawing everything really big. Um, uh, Val says, can confirm it's amazing, especially to put on in the background while you're working. Oh, thank you so much. Um, yeah, I actually really enjoyed, uh, the process of doing that ambient video. Um, I did everything in the Photoshop timeline too. Shout out to the Photoshop timeline, um, because it hardly ever gets talked about. <laughs> okay. So we have, I have an idea. So I, I kind of want to put like, maybe, maybe we have like a little park bench here or something. Um, and then I don't know, maybe there's like, there's like a little fountain here behind um like maybe some grass or something like like park like you know like city parks have like little little fountains and then maybe there's like this path that's kind of curving around here <clears throat> excuse me um and then maybe we have our little kitties walking here maybe one of them still got his like coffee to go that could be cute. That kind of like, um, kind of brings the last scene over to the next scene a little bit. And then maybe we have like some trees here in the background. Um, maybe there's like a little bit of a, a break in the trees to kind of show maybe the trees are a little bit lower here. And then we could kind of show some some buildings here in the background so we have like a bit of a and maybe even like a, a little moon oh this is the night it's a beautiful night josh says uh i'm checking out the ambient video now i love this kind of content yay I, I have been watching ambient videos for years now. Um, I discovered them actually one year because I was looking, I was doing some Halloween artwork and um, I wanted, actually I was doing Harry Potter artwork and, and it was around Halloween time. And I wanted to like, I was like, I wonder if there's like sound effects or something of like Hogwarts or whatever, I don't know. And I found um, one video that was like of Hogwarts Hall at Halloween time and it was, um, it, it, like, that was, like, three or four years ago, and I've been watching ambient videos ever since. I love them, especially if I'm trying to um, make artwork that has, like, a specific theme or something. It kind of, like, helps me get in the, the, in the zone, you know? Okay, so we have... I'm going to make the path a little bit wider here so we can make sure we fit both of our characters on there. Hey, Clever, how are you doing? Welcome. Okay. I want to make sure also that um, the sizing for the bench is the right, the right size compared to our characters too. We don't want it to be like too small. Okay. So that's something. I think that's pretty good. 
I know it's probably small for you guys. I'm going to blow it up here in a second so we can add some more detail. <laughs> uh, Val says, I found out about them when I wished I could write a spooky story to the sound of rain, but it wasn't raining. And I was like, I could just pretend with sound effects. Yes, exactly. Exactly. That's kind of like, it kind of like just helps you get into the, the atmosphere, you know, like of like world building and stuff. Okay. We got both of our little cats. I'm gonna have I'm gonna have the the blue cat looking at the orange cat here. Okay. Cute. Moving forward. I'm going to copy this layer and just hide it. And then I am going to expand this. Okay, it looks like a jumbled mess now, but <laughs> anyone out there also make thumbnails that are completely unreadable by the rest of the world. <laughs> um, okay, so now we can just go ahead and like start adding some details here <laughs> sketches talk to the one who matters i like that it's very true i'm actually going to push this bench back a little bit just so we give our characters a little bit more room i'm just gonna do like one of those typical little park benches you know the ones. And I'm also going to put little stars in the sky, too. I think I'm just going to indicate them by dots for now. Hi, Barbara. Welcome. How are you doing? Oh, you know what I also want to add is a, um, a park lamp like a street lamp um especially since it's an evening image that will give um a nice excuse to add some glow so i'm going to stick it um let's see where should i put it maybe i'll put it here in the foreground i think i might also make that um fountain a little bit smaller.
Uh, Luciano says, it's like those 10 hour long thunderstorm videos, but with beautiful illustration. I like it. Subscribe. Donald, thank you so much. Yeah, I'm, I plan on making more. It's just a matter of, um, you know, whenever I have the time to do so. Okay, so we have our little paved path here. Um, oh, and I said I wanted to make the fountain a little bit smaller. I'm going to lasso this fountain here. Yeah, I'll push this guy back a little bit. <laughs> Clever says, initially I thought the fountain was a Mandalorian helmet on a, helmet on a picnic table and wondered why Val wasn't going crazy. <laughs> I'm just putting subliminal Star Wars messaging into my artwork now. <laughs> okay something like that little little fountain and put some little bricks down we'll do a brick path Star Wars needs more cats. <laughs> okay. That looks pretty good. I'm liking it. I'm not going to worry about putting any detail on the buildings because I think I might just make the buildings silhouettes. Um, that'll make it easy on us. Um... And also, I'm going to pull this back so we can have our... Actually, here, I'll just redo it because it's small now. Let's just go ahead and... We need some kind of frame to just kind of help us know where we're at here okay i need to do that on a separate layer so then i can size it and position it the way i like Cool. Okay. Val says I take forever to do this part. Um, Cody, you, uh, this is so good. You've laid out a whole painting. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, sometimes it, it goes smoothly in, but most of the time it doesn't, honestly. Like, I, this is why I don't do, I don't normally do full scenes. And this is part of the reason why I like this painting so much is because it's one of the only ones that actually worked out for me. Um, so... Um, I'm pretty happy with how it looks so far. Um, I guess we'll see <laughs> how, how it works out as we continue to go. Um, let me, let me throw in, let's see, we're 20 minutes in. Okay. So it's taken us 20 minutes to get to this point. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a new layer and I am going to try 
my best to replicate our little characters we have here. Sometimes, you know, you guys, um, I know a lot of artists, um, you know, of course, we all struggle with recreating characters in different scenes. Honestly, you guys, a lot of the time, if I'm struggling to um, make a character's face shape exactly like how I had it in a different scene, I will just come over here on my old artwork and just and just trace it. Um, because then it's exactly how it needs to look and I can just alter it from there for how I need it in the new scene in the new scene. Um, so I'm just going to trace his face here. That way I can get his exact eye positioning down, his his mouth, his nose, his little whiskers. And again, I can just edit that a little bit. Just shift that on over here and I can just edit that for how I need um, in this scene. But at least, at least I have, you know, the basics down because that would have taken me forever to try to get that exact shape, you know, exactly how I needed it. Um, but like, for instance, I want him to be kind of like looking down at her a little bit. So I'm just going to get rid of that neck piece there. And I'm just going to kind of angle his face down. And let's see, I'm going to make him a little bit smaller here. Why struggle? It's your work. Exactly, exactly. Um, then I can just go ahead and come back in here and just strengthen these lines here. Oh, and also draw in the insides of his ears. And there we go. And nobody is the wiser. Um, and same with her. So I'm just going to make a new layer. And just copy her little face. And of course, you know, like you can really change up um the shapes and stuff like of course if you're gonna give your characters different expressions that can also change it up to you know kind of help it look a little bit less like it's an exact copy so i can just move her on over here so i'm gonna i'm gonna just like open up her mouth so it kind of just looks like they're still they're still chatting you know there's there's they're walking they're chatting we're talking, walking and talking. Oh, and I just realized, actually, I'm going to put that back on her head over here because I realized I didn't draw in her little, her little stripes. So I want to make sure I get in her little stripes. There we go. Cool. And that right there is usually the hardest part for me, although um, also it's kind of like posing. So let's go ahead and of course, I can't really do that copy and paste thing with this scene um, from our last scene because they were sitting in that scene and now I need them walking. So this is where we are going to spend the majority of our time trying to get the positioning down. So I would rather spend that time, you know, drawing their uh their bodies and stuff um right than like taking the time to try to get their face shapes down you know um okay so i'm going to draw um their little legs here so she's got on little boots cute little boots so i typically when i draw my characters um We'll do the head first, and then I will come in and do like, just like I did, like a little kind of rounded blocky shape for the torso. And then I will draw the legs. <laughs> I have a pretty unorthodox way of doing anatomy, you guys. I, I Anatomy is the thing that I really struggle with the most. Um, and I know I have like kind of pretty unique anatomy um, for my artwork. And that's really mainly because it's something that I've just, had to work around and like problem solve a lot throughout like the time that I've been doing artwork. So um, I'm really slow at drawing anatomy. So <laughs> we might be here for a while, but it's, we're getting there, you know, we're getting there. Um, and also great thing about trench coats is that it covers up most of the anatomy. So her trench coat comes down here like to her knees actually. So we're just gonna, 
We're just, we're just gonna cover that up. <laughs> And so she's got, it's a double-breasted trench coat here. Um, so I'm not working with any reference right now, but we do have her collar at least, so I can come in with her collar. And she's also got a little green scarf, too. Um, Luciano says, is this just a draft file or are you already working on the final size resolution? So what I do when I'm sketching, um, this is not the final resolution size. Um, so when I'm sketching, I actually am not worried about the resolution um, because... I can just, like with digital art, for instance, although this file is 300 DPI, I always work in 300 um, because that's what the size that printers work at. But when I'm sketching, I don't need to work at my full size because what I like to do here, I'll just show you an example. I'm going to grab all these and all these layers and stick them in a group here. What I like to do when the sketch is done is I will actually just pull it out and blow it up to its actual full size that I want it to be. And then, then I color on top of that sketch that I just blew up. So I color in the full size that I need um, for the final illustration. But when I'm just doing the sketch, I'm not super worried about it because you're not going to see like, you know, the low res sketch underneath. All I need to worry about is what the final painting on top looks like. Um, in that resolution size. So right now we're working pretty small. Honestly, if I was working by myself and not on stream, I would be working even smaller. Um, usually I'm like really like zoomed in and just like making these these tiny little characters and like drawing like, like teeny, teeny, tiny. Um, just because it, it's just easier for me. I just like doing it that way. Um, and then, like I said, <clears throat> Excuse me. Like I said, I will um, just blow it up from there. Okay, so let me do... Should I have them holding hands? I don't know if I can. Okay, let's let's try this. That would be cute. Okay, so she's got her little hand here. And then this sh shoulder is actually needs to be like right underneath the collar here. So I'll have her other hand be occupied by holding a to go coffee. that something like that oh uh, and then she's got like a little belt because she's fancy a little belt on her trench coat and then we have the double-breasted situation so we have this coming down and then we have our buttons oh and then her tail i always forget the tail always this always happens to me um so we have her scarf and then her tail 
scarf coming down like this. Maybe it's kind of like blowing back because they're walking forward. So the wind is pushing her loose garments back. So I'm kind of just drawing it like it's being blown back as she's walking. Kind of just using those curved lines to indicate that it's being blown back. Hey, Frank, welcome. How are you doing? Okay, there's her scarf. And then we need the tail. So I'm going to do the tail on a separate layer just so I can draw through without worrying about hitting anything that I don't want to. Um, so her tail is actually going to start right about here. And then we are going to pull it out and we're going to try to do like an S curve. A lot of cats have like an S curve tail. Um, in this scene, the original scene that we have, she's from the side, kind of like a three quarter view. So more of her tail is showing. So this time around, less of her tail is going to be showing because we're kind of more, more in the front. So let's see. So if I put it kind of out and then curving down like this. And I'll probably just want it just a little bit thinner than that. Last time, uh, last episode, if you guys missed it, um, we actually didn't have time to do the full coloring or anything, but I did the last few minutes do a color comp, um, just kind of threw some base colors on there, which um, I think was really fun. Uh, and I think it kind of helped pull the illustration together. So I'm probably going to do that again this time, uh, seeing how much time we have left um, after we complete our little sketch here. Okay, so we have her little tail and she's got some larger stripes towards the base, which we're not gonna be seeing. So we have these smaller stripes that come up and then the end is the one color. So let's go ahead and just leave it like that. There we go. I don't really like the way it kind of looks a little bit awkward the way it's coming out. So I'm going to angle it just a little bit, just so it looks like it's coming from a higher position. There we go. That's a little better. Um, okay, let's go ahead and I could um, add just a few more details. I'm going to add some little details to her boots here. Just throw on the little laces and stuff. There we go. Okay, I think that's pretty good. And then um, let's put on our reference here. So I'm gonna make another new layer and we are going to do our little biker kitty. I'm gonna make his head a little bit smaller. I feel like it's still a little bit too big. I'm gonna reference her head. Make sure they're about the same size. I'm gonna make him a little bit taller. And I'm also, again, I feel like this bench is still kind of in our way here. So I am going to lasso it and just make it a little bit smaller. And maybe I'll just push it back a little bit too. 
Love your drawing style. Thank you so much, Frank. Appreciate that. Thank you so much for popping in. Appreciate it. It's good to see you. Okay. There we go. That's a little bit better. Now he now we got some more room for our biker kitty friend. Okay. So let's go ahead and add in his body. So again, we are working with this character here on the right. Um, so he has like a little biker jacket on. Let's draw in his little torso here. Let's not put that on his head layer. And we'll draw just them holding hands here. I'm going to put I'm going to put his hand over top like that. There we go. Okay. And then and then he'll probably be holding a little a little to go cup as well. Probably going to be foreshortened a little bit. I just realized how much I'm like tilting my head. I don't know if you guys noticed that. <laughs> I'm like, Ugh. is that the right angle? I don't know. Okay, he's got his little to-go cup, and he needs also his little his little shoulders need to be pointed because he needs to have his little shoulder pads with his biker jacket. And it's kind of like a crop jacket, really. <laughs> so we got like this little crop. Let's see. Yeah, he's coming up right here. Yeah, so right at the end of his torso, it kind of comes out and you've got the little like little biker button collar, you know. This this actually this character was actually inspired by um, the punk cat. I don't know if you remember Val. But the punk cat that I did way back, I'm, I mean, I guess it, it must have been also been 2020, funny enough, um, that I did with you on um, the design off on Adobe Live, one of the original community shows for Adobe Live. <laughs> yeah, so that... I never do my characters like different colors. Like I typically stay with like natural colors for their fur, but somebody suggested that I do um that I do the cat blue in that scene. Let me I'm pretty sure I have it on this computer actually. I have to open it now. One second. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> yeah, so here here was the original punk cat that we did. Look at his little Tamagotchi. I remember, so this scene was actually, um, like, it was inspired by suggestions that was coming that were coming from the chat so like they suggested the Tamagotchi and the cowboy boots and walking a fish pet. <laughs> and the blue fur. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so this character inspired this kind of more city biker blue cat character. Um, and I I love them. <laughs> 
Um, okay, so we have the little jacket now. He's got his little his little elbow pads, shoulder pads, and yeah, there we go. Okay, and he's just wearing like a tee. And then he's also got little little pants and biker boots. Look at these little look at these, these little biker boots with the straps. That's great. <laughs> I want boots like that. Make sure I make his legs longer because I wanted him to be taller. Like I put his head taller than hers, but I have to make sure that I don't line up his legs with hers because then that would just make him farther back in the distance, but not necessarily taller. Those are the great days. I miss them. Wish we dual streamed more. I know, right? Hey, Jack, how are you doing? Speaking of the days of Val and Cody dual streaming, I know, right? We have an exciting announcement coming up for you guys here in the next couple weeks. Speaking of. Um, okay, so we got his little leg there. I might actually move his leg over here. That's a better place for it. Also, I think I've shown this technique on this stream before, but I'll, I'll talk about it again. Something that I um, also do when I'm struggling with bent drawing bent legs is I will just draw the straight leg and then I, right at the knee, I'll take the lasso and right at the knee, I'll literally just lasso that part of the leg and just angle it. Sometimes I like to shorten it too, depending on how how um, bent the leg needs to be. Um, but that helps also with like getting the length proper because it's sometimes it's hard to tell like how long you should make a leg if it's bent or an arm too, you know? Um, what? Suddenly my buttons, oh, that's why. There we go. Okay. My buttons on my tablet weren't working. The world needs more Val and Cody dual streams. Well, I'm glad you feel that way. <laughs> you will like our announcement. Okay, now let's just put the little heels on his boots. And as you can see, the way that I draw legs too, um, their legs are literally just rectangles. And then I'll draw the boots just within that same rectangle. I don't even make a separate shape for the shoes. It's literally just their legs. Um, so now I'm just going to go ahead. So his boots are actually a little bit taller than hers. His come up, like, let's say to here. Um, and he's also got some little knee pads on his pants too and these boots have little straps on the back like that okay <laughs> Cackles in <and> Sith Lord. <laughs> okay, now let's just add on his little pants details. Okay, cool. I actually still feel like his head is a little bit too big for his body. Um, let's go ahead and fix that. 
Let's condense these layers down. I'm going to make his body just a little bit bigger. And this leg, I think I need a little bit more foreshortening with the way that we have everything else. There. Okay. Now let's go back to our background scene and just fill in these gaps here. So we need we need the path to come in, cut in here. Here we go. Cool. Okay. And then the, the rest of this like backspace here, we'll just do like um, grass and bushes and such. We can just fill in that space with some shapes, really. It's just going to be like some random shapes because it's in the background and we don't really need the background to have too many details like that. Um, so we will most likely um, just kind of fill it in with some, some blobby colors. And I realize now, now that I'm looking at it a little bit more, that the center of this fountain is not centered. We need the center to be centered. Okay, there we go. That's something. Now we can go ahead and just turn this off. Now look at that. We have our full scene. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, we have less than 10 minutes left, you guys. Oh, man. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and let's color comp. Let's just go ahead. Let's see. Um, I am going to make a new layer. Let's just do one layer underneath everything just so we can kind of like get some ideas of what this could possibly look like if we were to color it in. I'm just going to go for a hard round. And oh man, as you can see, it's kind of crazy um, out of context to see colors like outside of a scene. This this brown color that I'm using right now is the color of our blue cat. <laughs> Man, color theory is wild. That's nuts. Um, so weird. Um, so actually, what I'm going to do... Let's see. First of all, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this... Speed paint. Yes, yeah, speed paint. Exactly. What's that's exactly what we're doing right now. Um, so we're just gonna go like this. And now that we have the brown background, the color relativity, now that I grab that bl the, the blue from the cat, um, it actually looks more bluish gray since we have that color and the, the the warmer color in the background your eye kind of like adjusts and makes it it makes it feel like it's um closer to what you think it is we are going to do these the one thing that i really love about nighttime scenes and part of the reason why i'm like zooming through this is because I want to show you guys my lighting trick that I did in this scene to get this lighting effect. Um, because without, without the lighting, actually, I think I have this artwork opened recently, not recently enough though. Um, Uh, 
Um, let me see here. I wanted to show you guys. Yes, no lighting. So this is what this scene looks like without any of the lighting effects, um, which is actually a good idea for me to grab the colors from this one because then it's not obstructed by the adjustment layers. Um, but the, it looks totally different compared to um, the scene with the lighting effects. So the way that I do my lighting effects is I actually grab this um this really bright yellow color it's it's still like a warm color i don't ever go like pure white i like to kind of go for like the baby yellow because it gives that warm lighting of course you can change it to whatever color you like depending on what atmosphere you want to go for you could even do you know bright pink or lime green or something whatever whatever um lighting effect you're doing but um, like, let's say for this uh, lantern here on the right, if we were going to add a lighting effect for this lantern, what I would do is I would take this bright baby yellow color and we're actually going to use real uh, Kyle's, Kyle Webster's watercolor brush. Um, it's called Water Watercolor 500 Giant. It's in his watercolor pack. Um, and you can download his packs for free if you have a CC sub. Um, so we are going to take this brush. It's kind of like a, it's just like a big wash, like light cloudy brush. Um, and it gives a, it's a really nice, like soft ambient lighting brush. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I am going to start small. We're going to center the brush on the lamp and then just kind of like lightly release our pressure as we go out to kind of dissipate the light. And I'm going to do that a second time too. Actually, you know what? I need to do this on a separate layer. Separate layer. We're going to do that. Sorry, I'm working really fast because I know we're running out of time. Um, but we're kind of just lightly dissipating it as we go here. So as you can see, it's brighter at our source. That's how you want it to be. So I'm kind of just going over it a couple of times. And then I'm going to go over to the layer, the layer, not the brush, but the layer adjustment, the blending mode. And we're just going to turn it to overlay. And that is how I end up with our, with my color effects. It, that's, that, I mean, that's it. It's literally just overlay. I just use overlay. Um, of course, it doesn't look as striking right now because we don't have any colors behind it. Um, but... And that's typically why I, I like to do um, lighting effects last um, because I get my scene in place and then I come back in and add in those those effects. Um, but yeah, if you guys wanted to like replicate that, it's super easy. <laughs> but we are just about out of time, you guys. So I hate to leave you. Uh, I wanna keep working on this with you guys, but thank you all so much for watching. And I, I so appreciate you all um, watching Illustrating Stories. This is actually our last episode of Illustrating Stories, but me and Val have a awesome, awesome announcement coming up in the next couple of weeks. So stick around for that. Um, and I hope you all have a fantastic week. And uh, again, thank you so much for just hanging out and supporting the stream. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys on the next show. Bye.